The iPad Pro is a lot of things. It's an incredible productivity tool, a canvas for your modern day Picasso, a handheld television to watch your favorite YouTubers and TV shows, your daily digital newspaper. But after half a year of using it at five to nine hours per day on average, to me, the question became, can the iPad Pro become your everyday laptop? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is awesome to see all of you guys here again. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dave and I have a secret man crush on Patrick Rambles. Now I've been using the iPad Pro every single day for business emails, script work, submitting auditions for acting jobs, drowning in graduate school papers. And so I think I have a pretty clear picture of everything the iPad Pro can do and can't do on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of you are coming in wondering if the iPad can replace your quote unquote traditional laptop and with the magic keyboard honestly it can replace a lot of what a traditional laptop can do but there are certain things that you simply won't be able to get around and so my job here is to unbiasedly just lay out the facts of everything that i've experienced so that way you can make the best most informed decision for yourself if the ipad pro is the best way to go for you or if maybe you're best informed to go for say like an m1 or an xps 15 or something like that so first let's discuss all of the things that the ipad pro does exceptionally well starting with the body it is incredibly premium in the hand it's nice and cool to the touch and the screen as i've kind of discussed ad nauseum to this point in my first impressions video everything is buttery and creamy and smooth flowing back and forth between applications opening and closing things and honestly just sifting around the screen that 120 hertz display everything here is fantastic that has not changed at all and in my experience where you really see the 120 hertz display shine is when you're playing games like genshin impact or asphalt 9 everything is just incredibly smooth the color tuning here is just really pleasing to the eyes the reds and blues and greens are like the proper amount of red blue and green that just kind of feels good to look at. The speakers are out of this world. Apple really has that down pack. They're nice and loud and bassy and you can feel all of the little things that are happening within your game. So if you're playing Asphalt, you can feel the revving of the engine. You're using a super move in a game or whacking someone with your sword. You feel all of those things. The speaker systems here, thumbs up. Now the cameras, I don't know too many people who are buying an iPad Pro for the cameras. They're okay, they're better than what you'd expect from a tablet. They're pretty good cameras, they're okay, nothing insane. So if you wanna to go to a concert and record the concert with your iPad, you could do that. I think the plus here though is really the LiDAR scanner and some of the AR games that you can play, those work really well. The, the depth that the sensor is able to pick up when you're using augmented reality works really well here. Um, not something that I personally use all that much, but if you're wondering about that, works pretty well. And the battery life, pretty fantastic. Now, if I don't have it attached to the Magic Keyboard, I can usually get close to two days of use with the iPad, just kind of in its tablet mode. We'll discuss the battery life with the Magic Keyboard a little bit later, but if you're looking to just use the iPad Pro as a tablet, the battery life is definitely a huge thumbs up. You're not going to have to worry about any slowdowns, things lagging or chugging. I have not experienced a single ounce of lag in my entire time of using this. And again, I've been using it every single day extensively, so really impressive there. If you're new to the channel and liking the video so far, a thumbs up goes a long way to helping us out. And if you're loving the content, hitting the subscribe button, notification bell is the best way to make sure that you're staying up to date with what I do next. Now, those were all of the things that I absolutely love about the iPad Pro on a day-to-day -day basis, how it feels, how it looks, how it sounds, how seamless everything is when you're doing your normal everyday tasks. Now, we're going to move into the section of things that the iPad either doesn't do completely or super well or that it just simply can't do it all and for this point this is going to be a breaking point for some of you and for a lot of you this is going to be okay whatever so the first thing we're going to be discussing is the multitasking now i will say i am grateful that multitasking is possible at all on the ipad pro you can split your screen in half you can have one app on one side another app on the other side and there's also a slim rectangle of an application that you can have open on the screen almost like a third app you basically take the app you drag it to the center of the screen and it makes a thin rectangle that you can have a document in. For myself, I use this a lot for the DSM-5. I was doing a lot of vignettes over the semester and so I was able to have, say, Google Docs open, able to have Chrome open, the half screens, and then I was able to have the DSM-5 and the Slim Bar, so that way I could refer to it when I was writing my diagnosis for the patient. Now, I'm grateful that the iPad Pro can multitask. What frustrates me is that I can only multitask this far and inevitably a lot of you are going to say Dave you do not need that many apps open on your screen at the same time 
I will reason with you and say, for the most part, all the time, no, I don't. Although, A, the iPad Pro is more than powerful enough, and we know this because of the awesome app Shift Screen, where you can have multiple apps open at the same time. And literally, just last week during finals week, I needed to have open Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Slides, I needed to have Chrome open and the DSM-5 open on my screen at the same time. So, although I don't need all of those things all the time, being able to not have to think about it or worry about it and just do it, would be pretty nice. Now the file management system on the iPad has gotten better over time, but the management of your file still isn't great. So when you're dragging a large file over to your iPad, a couple of things will happen. A, you'll drag the file over and it'll kind of disappear and look like it didn't drag over, but if you try and do it again, it's, it's loading in the background somewhere. Or you drag it over, you have to stay there only in the file management screen because if you go away, it'll halt the progress and stop it completely. Or you'll drag it over and you'll see it's there loading, but there's no time estimation, there's no giving you a sense of when it'll be done. You just kind of know it's loading. And for some reason, I can't just plug in my phone into the iPad and transfer files over that way. I have to either use a SD card with a USB-C hub, send the files from here to the SD card to the iPad, or I have the file go from here to Google Drive to the iPad. And in terms of downloading things, there are times when I can download things just fine on the iPad, but then sometimes it either doesn't recognize the file, doesn't want to cooperate with the file. So what I end up having to do is pull out my phone, download it on here with no problem, then I have to send it over to the iPad. It's an extra step. I don't know why it's this way. Again, for a lot of people, you guys won't care. I'm merely pointing out observations. <laughs> now this next one is probably going to be a pretty big deal for a lot of people. It's there's no web extensions on the iPad Pro. For me, this was a killer, a heartbreaker. This was something that when I was trying to activate the plugins, I thought maybe there was something I was doing wrong. Maybe I just didn't know how to do it. You can't do it. So for those of you looking to activate Honey and get your discount deals on your iPad while you're shopping, you can't do it. For all of you content creators out there looking to use, say, like vidIQ or TubeBuddy plugins to do all the analytics stuff on the iPad Pro, you can't do that, unfortunately. It's one of those things I tried to, couldn't do it, ended up having to use my other laptop that's not great at running those things and do it that way. It adds an extra step, takes extra time. For a lot of people, this won't be a problem. But again, just laying it out there for those of you who are looking for that in the iPad. Now, something else that makes me scratch my head is that I have all this screen real estate and I can't move applications wherever I want, nor can I take widgets and put them wherever I want. All this screen real estate, and I'm still confined to just putting things in a nice neat column and keeping the widgets on the main page all the way to the left. And it looks nice, but it's weird. Again, all this screen real estate can't do with it what I'd like to do with it. Merely an observation. And also for Zoom, this is a niche problem for sure. For those of you wondering about Zoom on your iPad, you're not able to have Zoom open, keep your face cam on, and go do something else. You have to remain on the Zoom screen to have your face cam on. Small problem, won't be a problem for a lot of people, but if you're wondering, there you go. And as you guys know, I love creating content for you guys on the iPad with LumaFusion. For those of you who aren't familiar, LumaFusion is essentially like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, before the iPad. It doesn't have all of those bells and whistles, but it's really powerful and it works really well. When I'm exporting a video, I have to leave it on that screen. I can't minimize it and then do something else. I have to leave it and basically either watch it or go get up and do something else with my life, which admittedly the latter not, not too bad of a thing. And now I turned it over to the Magic Keyboard, the $300 accessory that Apple claimed was going to turn your iPad into a laptop. Now the Magic Keyboard is an incredible piece of technology. The travel on the keyboard is wonderful. The keys feel nice and satisfying to type on. The trackpad, the trackpad is phenomenal. It has all of your gestures built into it, so you can swipe left and right to go back and forth between applications. You can pinch in order to bring up all of your windows at one time, and the tracking on it is superb. It feels like you're using an actual mouse. And honestly, the Magic Keyboard was something that I was skeptical on getting because of the price tag, but I went in person to the Apple Store, tried it out, and I honestly fell in love. For most people, 
I don't know if I can recommend $300 for a Magic Keyboard despite how fantastic of a piece of tech it is and it's an amazing accessory for the iPad, but $300 is steep. If you saw my holiday video right here, for $300 you can get an entire desk complete with stand, Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, and a couple of accessories to spruce up your workspace. What you get with the Magic Keyboard is convenience and power. You can't utilize those gestures on a Bluetooth keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse. You have to look around three additional things as opposed to just having one case that serves as a keyboard, but also as a casing for your iPad. And so I will say I'd hold on to your $300 and look at using it for something else that's going to benefit you. I will say if you want the Magic Keyboard, it's an amazing piece of tech. And if you have the $300 to spend, you're not going to be upset with the product at all. There are cheaper alternatives on the market that's going to get you a similar experience to what you're getting on the Magic Keyboard. But again, if you have the money to spend and you want the best available option, Magic Keyboard is pretty much the way to go. Now, if I'm using the Magic Keyboard and just sticking to like documents and typing and spreadsheets and browsing and things like that, I can actually still get an entire day of battery life on the iPad Pro. But if you are doing some media consumption and game playing on the Magic Keyboard, you're definitely going to be getting less than a full day's worth of battery life. But if you're sticking to like your productivity stuff, you should be pretty good to go. And so now we're at the one to $2,000 question. Can the iPad Pro become your everyday laptop? And after using it every single day extensively, I would say mostly. Again, the iPad Pro does about 85% of everything that I needed to do on a daily basis. Using it is incredibly fluid and smooth, and I love that about it. It. But the things that I mentioned before, the lack of extensive multitasking, the no plugins, the file management, every time I run into one of those things, it makes me just a little bit frustrated. The iPad Pro is more than powerful enough to support these things, but Apple purposefully holds it back so that way you can buy a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro or go out and buy one of their other devices. But I do think that for the everyday person, that 85% is going to be enough. Playing games, watching your favorite YouTubers or TV shows, typing up a paper for class, for most people, this is going to be enough. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think the iPad Pro is your next laptop, or if maybe you think you're better suited for, say, like an XPS or a Mac. For me personally, this 85% is not enough for me to sell my iPad, get a replacement. For the time being, I'm going to sit with it, ruminate with it, grow with it, and eventually I'll make that move. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. As always, I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time that it is that you are watching this. And as always, peace, love, adios. Bye.